This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about just about everything, your life, your money, your relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend George Campbell, and we are taking your calls on everything. So give us a shout at 888-825-5225 if you are like millions and millions of Americans who are just struggling. Money's hard right now. It's a mess, and it's scary, and it's... Um, it's just, it's a mess, man. I just drove by the gas station. I got to go fill my car up right after I get off and I could, it's, it's tough, man. And, um, if you're scared about that, if your relationships are a mess, you're heading into the summer, um, give us a call. 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Luke in Denver, Colorado. What's up, Luke? Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, good, man. How are you? Good. So, um, my question is, um, I have a question, um, basically trying to make my parents understand, um, a financial question. So they know your baby steps, but, um, we, they have coming into an inheritance and I'm trying to help them understand, um, that it's better to pay off their house rather than leaving all the money in, you know, on the stock and 401k. So that's kind of my question today. Um, so, so the great points. Will Smith once said to take it from him, parents just don't understand. And it's going to be hard for <laughs> you to do this, man. Uh, George can walk you through the math part. Um, tell me they understand the baby steps. Or let me just back out. You're not going to help your parents understand this unless they ask for that sort of wisdom from you. Um, have you sat okay. down and said, hey, I think this would be the wisest thing? Or, hey, y'all know the baby steps have worked for y'all. Here's what Dave and his team say about what's, what comes next. Have you had that conversation? Yeah, I've had a, a small conversation with him. Mainly just my dad thinks that he can make more money in the stock market. I just think that he's in, he's in sales, and so he gets really stressed out. And I think it's more of an emotional thing and for him uh. to be, you know for him to finally pay it off. I'm trying, I'm just worried about him, you know? So, uh, dude, he's um, lucky to have yeah. you. He's lucky to have you. Um, yeah. George, what do you think, man? Well, I just, I go back to PBS, powdered butt syndrome. Parents mm-hmm. don't want to hear it from the kid who, you know, they changed your diaper, man. And so they're going, this kid's going to give me financial advice? <laughs> I don't think so. So I love the heart behind it. And yes, you can show them math all day long. And truthfully, your dad's doing the math on paper. He's a sharp guy. He's going, I can make way more on my investments. But you just told me he's stressed out. What's he stressed about? Well, it's just, you know, he's in sales, and so I think anyone knows how that goes. It's just very stressful sometimes, and I think that paying off his house would alleviate some of the stress because I can see it sometimes. How, how, um, old, are you, how old are you, Luke? 20. 20? Okay, so yeah. I, I, I don't have any fancy psychological studies or anything to tell you. I'm just going to tell you what I would do if I was you. I would take okay. Dad out for coffee or for a donut or something, and I'd say, hey, I'm just going to say this one time, and then we're going to go back to everything's the way it was. And he'll look at you kind of weird. And I would tell him, hey, since I've known you, you've worked really, really hard. And you've been, uh, you're a great salesman. And that comes with a lot of stress. And there's been seasons when you've been really stressed. And you have an opportunity to take a huge chunk of that stress off your plate forever by paying your house off. Yeah. And I know you can go make, you think you can go time the market and make good money. Um, and now it's, it's just the stock market's on sale. So we're going to dump all this money in there. I get that, that you're going to be able to breathe if you pay your house off. That's why yeah. millions yeah. of people do it. They get out of debt and then they go chase the market down and try to make money in real estate and investing. But I'd have that conversation. I'd say, Hey, I'm 20. You literally have wiped my butt dad and you don't want to hear it from me. I love that George PBS. I'll have to keep that in, in my back pocket. And let that be the end of it, okay? But here's what we're doing. We're not trying to sell them on the math. We're not trying to sell them on, because there's this magic plan. We're selling them on, hey, I see you, Dad, and I love you, and you got a shot to be less stressed for the rest of your life. And that's a totally different approach. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. That's definitely good advice. Luke, could he wipe out the entire mortgage with this inheritance and still have money left over? Oh, yeah. I mean, he, I mean, I can give you the numbers if you'd like. Sure. I'm um, just curious. He, he, yeah, yeah. So my, both his parents both died in succession a month apart. Um, but uh, they, they, uh, they, he's getting 1.6 million um, from everything. Wow. And uh, he's worth, he has about a million dollar house and about a million dollars in investment. He did tell me that. So he's like, I'm fine. I can invest this in the market. And he only owes about 120,000. 
I just think he said that he can just make like 30 or 40 grand more on the, if he has eight years left on his mortgage. Gosh, dude, so pay he, it he off, man. And, this is such a small percentage <laughs> of the inheritance. Of everything. It's a small percentage of what you got left. Oh, He's going to be fine. I mean, he doesn't know, need just, the money for retirement. Yeah, yeah, he, exactly. I mean, he's he's in good shape. I just don't understand. He just thinks he can make more money in the stock market and where. How old is he right now? So he's fifty-one. So he's got plenty of yeah, life left, plenty of working career left. So I'm just going. How much life does he want to live in between retirement, where he would have that mortgage payment freed up to do who knows what, to yeah. give more, to go on vacations, to you know, to be a blessing to the family and whoever in his community. So I look at it through that lens too, but listen, I'm a Ramsey guy. I can't convince my own parents to pay off their house. <laughs> and so now if they had $1.6 million sitting around, it may be an easier discussion, but at the end of the day, he's going to be okay. Yeah. Whether or not he pays off his house today or eight years from now, uh, he's not broke. And so that was my question. If this guy's broke, it's a different situation. Yeah. All right. Let's go out to uh, Anthony in Jacksonville. Hey, Anthony, what's up? Hey, hey, thanks for having me on. I just had a few questions for some advice. Go for it. Okay, so uh, I get out of the military in the next few months, and my wife and I, we bought our house a few years back for 150000 and we plan on moving back to my home state of Mississippi. And so we're trying to determine if you think it would be a good idea where we have the opportunity to sell it right now for 260 which would pay off all of our debt and we could move in with her mom for the my remainder that I have so about five or six months where we wouldn't put uh, we wouldn't have to pay uh, any rent or anything until we start looking for a new home uh, in Mississippi where it's a lot cheaper than here in Jacksonville my rule of thumb is generally if there's a period at the end of that sentence so and what i mean by that is we're going to sell our house we're going to cash out right now because the market's still bonkers and then we're just going to move in with my parents and we're going to figure out what comes next that's when relationships get melted down because it that one month we're just going to be here for a couple of months turns into two years turns into why are you leaving it's a mess you saying hey we're going to cash out yeah we're going to get completely debt free we're going to do this for five months and then we're heading back to another part of the country where we want to make our um, our home outside of the military, dude. I, I don't. I think that's great, man. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I like this plan. As long as you said four or five months, and then you said you were going to start looking. So I would start looking when you move in and start to get a feel for: Do we have enough money? What kind of house? What area? Start making plans at that point, so it doesn't drag on. And Anthony, uh, we've done this enough. Let me tell you what would be a real gift to you, your wife, and your mother-in-law. Sit down. Take them to a nice dinner. And sit down and say, okay, let's come up with all the rules. When do you want us, right. you know, like, like and I, I'm being serious about how late or early do you want us um, in the house? Like, is it make you uncomfortable if people are coming and going after midnight? Um, I'll make the coffee. I'll do take care of the lawn. Go ahead and set all that stuff up so there's not any weird tension on day one when you all move in. And you are going to have to work, my brother, because your work, you're, you're used to living with a bunch of knuckleheads. And now you're moving in with your mother-in-law. So you're going to have to level way what you're going to have to shower every day, probably. All right. Thank you so, so much for your service, my yes. brother. Congratulations on being debt-free. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. show i'm john deloney joined by my good friend george camel and we're taking your calls on money and life it's triple eight eight two five five two two five it's triple eight eight two five five two two five let's go to greg in boise idaho one of the most beautiful places in the country what's up greg Ooh, i agree with that 100 percent um so here's what i've got going on i'm in baby steps four five and six uh, starting a new job in a week, and the new job has a quarterly um, option to buy into the company stock at a 10% discount. 
do you take part of your 15% of your investment portfolio and allocate it towards that? Or if I want to take advantage of that, do I need to find uh, money in my budget to throw at that that is not part of the investment strategy of the 15%? Great, great question, Greg. And that's awesome that you're even thinking about this stuff. How old are you? 34. Okay. Fantastic. Well, if I'm in your shoes, I'm investing 15% into the 401k. Beyond that, if you want to play with some money with the employee stock program, I'm okay with that. We're not huge fans of it because essentially you're investing into a single stock at a slight discount. And so we don't know the future of this company. Uh, John's got a very personal story about his mom. Greg, my mom worked for Enron. And oh no! Yes, and uh, and and less because we didn't have a lot of money growing up, but she, it wasn't that she had a ton of money in there. But we did have a number of family friends that were high up in that company who went to bed multimillionaires and woke up literally with nothing, right? And so I've got a I've got a personal uh it buyback stock plans or discounted stock plans um, on the backs of it's kind of I feel like it's like me talking to my son who's 12 and being like hey listen um, I'm gonna let you buy shares of your own room what do you think about that right and it just feels gross to me um, but that's not to say you can't make some great money and the co- I don't want to say every company's in run because they most certainly are not so it may work out great for you in the long sure. run. Sure I just like investing 15% into mutual funds in your 401k because it's so diversified way less risk than a single stock of one company so if you said hey should I go put all my money just into Tesla I would say no so the same applies to your company here now I understand they're at a discount so if you're going to play with this after the 15% I would sell them after you get them so that you kind of cash out and then you can invest that money. And that way you're going to be better off in the long run. So, and I, George, that's, that's a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. So if you buy the stock with a 10% discount and it, I'm sure it's got some vesting period and you, then you go sell it, you've, You've made 10% on that money every time. Yeah, and there may be some capital gains taxes, so sure. make sure you look into the tax implications of whatever you're selling. Uh, but I did this, John, when I first worked at Apple. I was a young buck at 18, and they had a stock purchase program, which was awesome at the time because this was, you know, 2009, 2010. Yeah. iPhone was hot. And so I ended up selling some stock to get out of debt. Which was which I was very pleased with, yeah. uh, but again, there's some risk there. Now, yeah. Apple's a very it's an outlier Apple's company. Apple. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know Greg's company, but I don't think it's Apple. Most and that's the hard part is uh, Daniel Kahneman wrote about this so beautifully. If y'all haven't read the book Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, uh, it's one of the most important books ever written. But he talks about how it's so tempting to look back and say, if I had just bought Tesla, mm-hmm. then I would be a gazillionaire. And you don't think about all of the battery manufacturers or electric car companies that gave it a shot and went and got got funding and that we don't hear about because they don't exist. There's way more of those than there is of the Teslas or the Apples, right? Yeah. And so we're not a fan of single stocks because of the volatility. You're putting all your eggs in that one basket. So I like you investing 15% into the retirement plan and just something boring like a 401k. And if you got money left over that, beyond that, that you want to play with, it'd be something similar to crypto where I'm like, hey, if you lose this money, I put it in and then forget that you ever had it. And if you make 10% minus uh, capital gains, you make the spread good on for that. you, man. Good for you. Good That's day. fantastic. I like that. All right, let's go to Palin in Washington. What is up, Palin? How's it going, sir? How are you doing today? Dude, we're doing fantastic. And yourself? Awesome, man. Awesome. Hey, I just read the money, total money makeover, and I'm fired up, man. Woo! I want to do this. Fantastic. It'll dude. do that to you. Awesome. <laughs> so my question is, we had some trips planned before we decided we want to do this uh, payoff debt and stuff like that. Now, the first trip is here in a couple months, here in July. We're going to be just going camping. Everything's paid for. Everything, all the money's set aside. We're ready to go. Now, I'm okay with canceling that trip, just my wife and my kids would be a little bit of upset. Um, so I'm in, and another thing, we have another trip planned in about 2025. We're just going to go to Florida and see some relatives. Should I cancel these trips, tell it completely debt-free? I'm guesstimating I'll be debt-free in, I don't know, two years. I got about 50 grand in total debt. So what is your guys' advice? Did you say you're going on this other trip in 2025? 
Yeah, we're kind of planning way ahead, right? Wow. We're planning Dude, I don't know what's ahead. happening next weekend. This guy's next I level. literally don't know what day it is right now, man. I just got back in town, Palin. I don't know what day it John is. John plans on the world ending before then, so he's not planning yeah, any trips. Yeah, there's no way oh, we okay. make it to 2025. Well, to answer your question, you never how, know anymore. how much is this camping trip total? So, uh, total, probably 1500 bucks. Okay. And you have fifty grand in debt. I, I'd go camping. What do you think, George? I mean, yeah. here's the thing. If if you can make up the fifteen hundred bucks with some side hustles, I'm I go, okay. We'll let this one roll. It's not gonna set you back that much. But if I'm in your shoes, I may go, how do we make this trip less expensive and still do something yeah. fun? <laughs> I'm wrong. Right. I was wrong. Because you've Palin, gone camping, right? Going, I mean, you I, did it I, cheap. I leave in the morning. We're going to go camping. And Palin, we're going to a KOA, and which, by the way, are incredible. There you go for your free advertisement, but that place is one of my favorite places in the world. I don't know how you're going to spend $1,500 oh, okay. $1, camping unless you're glamping. I thought the point something. of camping was that it's cheap. That yeah, feels exactly. pretty pricey. It's, yeah, it's a boat in camping. Uh, it just costs you fuel, food, tent camping is basically what we're doing. Okay. For about a week. Yeah, and if you do drive a mile or two, that's going to cost you a good fifteen hundred bucks these In a days. Week. So that's probably true. Um, <laughs> so Palin, here's the thing: I I was wrong. Um, I think the example you will set for your family, the commitment and passion you will communicate to your family about how important it is to get out of debt, is more important than a fifteen hundred dollar vacation. I do agree with George. Okay. I, that does not mean that you don't do something as a family. I think y'all get a tent or you get a small cabin for 50 bucks and y'all go do a weekend thing together. Um, y'all camp out in the yard. Y'all go figure out some things y'all can do locally. But I think this is one of those um, stake in the ground moments. We're not going on vacation, family. We're, I dug this hole, us as a family, we dug this hole and us as a family are going to work like um, maniacs to get out of this. And here's what you're going to find okay. real quick. You're free from that $50,000. The side hustles and the energy you put into this work is going to magnify into a raise at your job. You're going to end up in a new job, and you're going to look up in 18 months. You're going to be debt-free. You're going to be making different kind of money. And then the vacation you'll go on next summer or the summer after that is going to be something spectacular, right? Okay. Palin, how much money do you guys have in the bank right now? Uh, we have just that, that about two grand, two grand saved. So that scares me to go, this camping trip is going to cost us our entire bank account. Yeah. That just feels like a scary place yeah. to be. Your I don't think you're going to be fund. at peace on that trip. Yeah. So that's part of it. Right. And uh, you obviously you read the books. You're about to go full throttle, $1,000 starter emergency fund and start attacking this debt. Can you work overtime and take extra jobs? I can, yeah. I can do some side hospitals, yeah. I love it. Because what I would do is dangle work? that vacation in front of you. My wife is a stay-at-home mom. Okay. So this may, she works 10 hours a week at the local church. Okay. Cool. So this may be one of those um, shapeshifter family moments where you and your wife go out and you'll go get dinner, you go get breakfast, and you lay this out and say, hey, um, I read this book and I feel a burden now that uh, our family's okay. chained up to a bunch of different banks and to car notes and to whatever. And – I want to work really hard. I want us to work really hard to liberate this family once and for all. And we're going to send a message okay. to our kids that this is who we are. We're going to send a message to our community to this is who we are. Um, even if you got to lose a couple hundred dollar deposit, I think the net, I, I didn't even think to ask that question, George. You got two grand, man. You're going to come back with $500 in the bank. This is going to be a way more stressful vacation than it is any sort of restoration. Right? Restore the joy the will disappear quickly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Get out of there, man. Cancel vacation and call us in a, in a couple of years when you're heading off to a family cruise, my brother. Woo! business or HR leader, you know your employees are dealing with a lot. My employee wellness team, Smart Dollar, just did a study and found out that after living through one of the toughest times in history, 
60% of employees say that their mental health has gotten worse. Half say their mental health keeps them from doing their job to the best of their ability. Good leaders take their employees' mental wellness seriously because it's good for your team and your business when your employees are healthy mentally. And it's the right thing to do. If you call yourself a leader, lead both on the bottom line and in the hearts and minds of the people that work for you. So this Mental Health Awareness Month, give your employees a way to deal with their stress and put them on a path to care for their mental wellness. I've got an anxiety relief checklist that gives your employees simple steps they can take to to relieve their anxiety so they can start bringing their full selves to work again. To get my anxiety relief checklist for your employees, go to RamseySolutions.com slash anxiety checklist. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com slash anxiety checklist. All right, George, you got another one for me. So speaking of anxiety, John, the student loan uh, crisis is still upon us, and the student loan pause got kicked down the road again till August 31st. You know what it started to remind me of? What's that? Like when I was in middle school, and I asked this girl out, and she was like, maybe. Wow. And so I just hung in there, and then I come back like a couple weeks later like, hey, uh, will you go with me? Remember that's how I used to ask it back in the oh, day? Oh, yeah. And she was like, ah, Maybe. And I was Ouch. like, okay. That's and a I nice up, rejection. I end up burning my seventh grade year. It never happened. I never th- once thought student loan forgiveness and John's childhood love life my could ever coincide. It never happened. Wow. Just maybe me all the way into isolation and sadness. And Well, it reminds me of how many people have been rejected from the student loan forgiveness program. <laughs> that just too like you is were like rejected. my debt life. It's like go. my uh, dating life, yes. Thank well, you. as you know, John, we scour the internet for the latest and greatest videos. And uh, there's one that's talking about the student loan forgiveness. Should you pay off your student loans right now? And so I wanted to play it for you and get your take. You good with that? The last few times you've sprung a TikTok video on me. Let's do it. Go for it. Roll the beautiful bean footage. Hey, everyone. I saw this headline today in the news, and I just wanted to kind of talk about it because it is interesting. There's potential to have some sort of student loan forgiveness on federal student loan debt here being announced in the next couple weeks. So, uh, you know, I myself have actually paid a little over $5,000 this year with interest rates staying at 0%. It's allowed me to make a significant dent in my balance, but... You know, I might not want to keep paying that as we get closer to August 31st, especially if there's going to be some sort of forgiveness. Um, I might s- switch my strategy. Instead of going right to my student loan bounds, I'm going to put that in savings and then maybe wait and, and see what-, what this announcement's going to be like. So stay tuned. We'll keep you up to date, but we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and maybe what some of your strategies are right now. Thanks. Oh, I'll give you some thoughts and strategies, John. Well, hold on. I know. Did That's- you just hear the – there's the paradox there. I There is. But can we just call out most people on TikTok that you've shown me in the past? Because I don't even know how to. I, I would not even know how to log. Do you we log? We don't give TikTok? you access, John. It's too dangerous. I know. You can't handle it yet. That guy seems like a nice guy. Yeah, oh, I'm not mad at the guy. He seems like a nice guy. He was he, commenting he on music. It's very calming music. I really enjoyed that, actually. Yeah, I feel a little bit more at peace. All right. So the article behind him that you can't see if you're listening uh, was from Bloomberg. said, don't bother paying off student loan debt right now, advisors say. Who are these advisors? We don't know. Why do they want to keep people in debt? I have no idea. But what's funny is this gentleman saying, hey, I've been paying off my student loan debt. I'm really feeling the progress as I make a dent in the principal while the interest is paused. But I might hold off now to see what happens here. Yeah. And I think he represents a lot of Americans out there going, well, I'm not going to pay him off because what if, what if, what if. Yeah. So, George, you and I have just – we've talked about this a lot just privately. Um, my, my two thoughts are this. Um, one, I am getting – this is just – reality and be disingenuous to not say this i do have friends of mine across the country who are in various fields where they've um most of my friends are nerds no shock that have their doctorates and or have their law degree that have gotten notice over the last six months that hey we've your your loans have been forgiven like and they're gone um it's a very specific type of loan in a very specific specific type of program but i hadn't heard that before so that has actually happened the other side of it is it's not wholesale, right? And this idea that this is just going to happen, and I, I think you and I and Dave were talking, I think this is going to get punted and punted and punted, and they're going to have some sort of small, low level, we'll take away 5000 or 10000 or something like that with some sort of stuff, right around midterms and try to swing something back. Here's the bigger deal for me. Um, I grew up, didn't have a lot growing up. My wife grew up, 
uh, she didn't have a lot. We had great parents who worked their butts off for their communities. We just didn't have a lot of money. And we signed up, went to college because that's what you're supposed to do. And then we kept, then my wife went to, got her master's degree. I got my master's degree. She got her doctorate. I got my doctorate. And we look up and we had 106 figures in, in, in student loan debt, right? I, I knew we had to pay it back, but I didn't, I didn't get it. And I didn't know what 30 years at $900 a month meant. You know what I mean? I was 18 and then I was 21. But I always had this nagging sense that I signed my name on a piece of paper and I told somebody, if you help me get through college, I'll pay you back. And they did, whoever they happened to be. And I felt a integrity obligation. Two poor kids who are lower middle class kids who got into it, but we still signed our name to this thing. And it's kind of like, um, like in the nutrition world right now, all of the conversations are about, um, like calories are returning this idea that a lot of, a lot of the problems you see downstream is because of some fancy diet, but you got to get back to thinking about calories. That's just what the science is telling us. And that's very, very, very true. And if I just eat Twinkies every single day, cause they're 50 cents, that will cost me at some point in my life, right? Even if I look at the calorie density, all that stuff, it's going to cost me. And so we can all clap and cheer that the loans get taken away and we just roll another $1.7 trillion. On, we will pay for this and it will be really rough what we do. And so for me in my house, it was about looking in the mirror saying, we did this. We said we were going to pay it off. Do we know what we're getting to? No. Are we in a mess? Yes. Was it an awful couple of years getting that stuff paid off? Absolutely. But I walk a little bit taller, right? And I'm not sitting there just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And so I love the first part of that video where he says, man, we've had no interest. This, if there's ever a moment to burn through your loans right now, pay them off. You don't, they're, they're not making any money on it, right? Yeah. That's my, that's my take on it. That's a good take. And I, I as well walked the stage with uh, $36,000 in student loan debt, not as much as you. Um, and I just thought, I don't remember signing up for this. Like, I remember the conversation <laughs> with my dad was like this. Hey, Dad, how are we going to pay for college? And he's like, ah, oh, we, we got it taken care of. What I didn't know was that meant we're going to sign up for student loans, parent plus loans to make sure it's taken care of. Gotcha. And when you're 18, you don't know. You just go to school going, this is fun. Yeah. The college experience. I'm not thinking about money. I don't have a job. Right. The number of T-shirts and dinners I put on student loans. It just is, it's, it's maddening. Mind numbing. Yeah, it's maddening. So to that point, pay off your student loans. Stop waiting for someone to fix your life. Because if that's how you look at student loans, it's probably how you look at other areas of life. Right. Why, this is my problem. I didn't sign up for this. And at what point do we go, I signed up for all these credit cards and now I'm in debt. They should forgive them. Right. At what point do we draw the line? And I'll, I'll even say this, um, just because I was so intimately involved in this industry, um, there are people that were preyed upon, whole groups of people that were literally targeted. They don't know enough. They'll sign up for this. We can get them on the hook. And so at its core, I'm not even opposed to a, a like relieving of some of this debt for people. And we're seeing some of that happen now. Yeah, I've, I've got no moral issue because people were trapped. Not just even in my case, right? People were preyed upon. I was just made an ill-informed decision. But you can't pay, you can't forgive the loans because all these students are going to, if we all got our loans forgiven in May, I got to sign up for the summer term in June. What are we going to do? And so until you fix the front end of this deal, until you sit down and say, all right, how are we going to fix the college mess yep. and the cost of college and the value of college? Until we have that conversation, dude, this is, <laughs> it's like drilling a hole in your bathtub without turning, the, I mean, it's like... Turn the water off. Yeah, turn the water off first, man. Oh, man. Yeah, we talk about this in Borrowed Future, our documentary that you're in. Good stuff there, John. Appreciate well, it. thanks for letting me watch yet another TikTok Enlightening video. Enlightening you. You're welcome. <laughs>
This is the Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. Let's go to Luis in Raleigh, North Carolina. What's up, Luis? Oh, hi, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. What's up? Um, so, uh, for starters, for starters I'm, I'm a handyman. So, I make like 32000 a year. And, um, you know, seems like I don't, know, I don't know where my money is going. I don't know how to budget. And um, so, so I was married, and um, my wife passed away uh, last November. Oh, man. Mm. What so happened? Hey, to, hold on. Uh, had... Luis, Luis, Luis. Can I just tell yeah. you, brother? I'm so sorry. What happened? It's, it's a good. Um, I'm creative cancer. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So sorry. How long? <laughs> uh, well, she, she fought it. Uh, for two years, you know, <sighs> the first years, you know, she did the chemo and radiation. Yeah. She also had uh, the surgery, the Whipple. Yeah. With the removed part of the pancreas, and uh, she was doing good. And then, you know, she was, yeah, we told her she wasn't in, in remission for good, you know, and all of a sudden it just come back, but Man. stronger. I'm so sorry. So Louise. her body kind of was able to take it. Yeah, I'm so sorry, brother. All right, so since November, and um, here you find yourself. So what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's been it's been rough, but yeah. you know, uh, she's with me always, and you know, she's I can feel her spirit all the time. See. Si. All right. So what's up? Everything. So, so we had a house, and uh, so we ended up selling the house, and so now I got. So basically, yeah. So I made thirty two thousand a year. Um, I always seems like I used to spend the money. I don't have no savings. Um, I had a twenty five hundred dollar CD for six months, and um, that's all I have on my name. But now I have thirty two thousand dollars that I don't know what to do with it, yeah. and I don't want to spend it. You know? Why'd you sell your house, man? Huh? Why'd you sell your house? Because I didn't um, I didn't qualify for a for a mortgage because well I don't have a social security number. Okay. Um, yeah. So you make forty two thousand as a handyman. Thir- thirty two. You make forty two. Thirty two. Thirty uh, two. Thirty two. Thirty two. Maybe more because I don't keep track of it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So you're because, making thirty two, uh, but you have thirty two from the house sale. No, no, no. That, well, that's what I, that was my cut because it was divided in three for three pieces. Uh, divided by three. Oh, so, you had to split. You had to had, split up the the sale of the house. The money y'all made. Yeah, with the kids. Yes, 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 oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, how much money do you have to your name today? This thirty, this thirty-two k. Okay. Um, twenty-five hundred dollars in a CD, and uh, maybe another two thousand. The the check is still unclear, but without without two thousand, I'm gonna pay uh, two credit cards that both are five hundred dollars each. How much debt do you have total? That's all. Um, Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred on a credit card. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, well, the reason being is because I just use those credit cards when I get a job, and I just buy the tools, you know, the the, the material for the job. Sure. Yeah. 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 So then once I get paid, I pay the credit card. Got but, it. Well, here's what I would do if I'm if I'm in your shoes and I woke up today, I would use part of that money to pay off all your debt and then never go back into debt. I want you to cut up the card and switch to a debit card. And you can have your clients pay for the materials up front. I just did this with my handyman the other day. They called me from Lowe's and said, hey, what's the card number? And that way he never has to get reimbursed from me. So you could try that route because what I'm worried about happening is you put this money on the credit card and then you hope for the reimbursement, but then you spend the money over here and it becomes a cycle. Right, right, right. So, hey. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to take uh, – and the reason I do this is because I don't like to take money up front. From the customers. I know, but hey, listen, Luis, we, listen. Yeah. You're going to have to make some changes, okay? Okay. There's some things that you don't like doing, like budgets. You don't like um, well, sitting. Well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how to do it, though. I, I know, no, know? no, no, no. We're going to give you we'll the – We'll walk you through that. We're going to walk you through it, but here's what I'm saying. At some yeah. point, and hopefully that's right now, you're going to stop with any sort of excuses moving forward, and you're just going to start doing things differently. We're going to give you, we're right. going to teach you how to budget, teach you the materials. We're going to do that quick, and then we'll send you some, some free resources that we're just going to hook you up with. You're going to have okay. to go talk to somebody, 
whether that's friends, whether that's community members, whether that's a counselor in your community about grieving the, wi- the loss of your wife. You're going to have to choose. I want to do business differently. I want to build a business. In this market, $32,000 a year for a handyman, no chance, brother. You should be making three times that much. And right. you're worth it. You just have to be intentional right. about it. So, do I have your commitment before we get down this road? Because if not, we can just take the next call. Are you no, 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 yes, Are yes, you willing that, to do things differently? Here. Yes, I do. All yeah. right, we got you. Good. So, once we pay off this credit card, we say no more to credit cards, and we don't touch debt ever again. And you ask me, what's the best way to spend the 32000 The best way is to not spend it. This part of this is going to become your emergency fund. And so, look at what six months of expenses looks like for you. Are you renting right now? Um, all my expenses um, on this new place I'm living is going to be $800. $800 a month total for your expenses? Yeah, yeah. Where are um, you living? Yeah. Um, uh, her cousin uh, had a house that needed to be fixed. So uh, we came in, into agreement while I'm living there, I'm going to fix it. So Is it a safe place to live? Like is it a livable condition? Uh, it's now. I mean, I've been working on it, but okay. yes, yes, it's livable. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call your emergency fund $7,500 just to be safe because one thing goes out, HVAC, you name it, things can add up real quick. So if we took out 7500 okay. out of that money, we paid off the credit card, that probably leaves you with a little over $20,000, correct? Right, right. Okay. We're going to start using this to start building your life because I'm guessing you have nothing invested you said you had nothing saved, so we've got to start working on Luis and how do, do we a prepare car, for Luis? the future. Right. Uh, what, what was that? You have a truck, like a work truck? Yeah, I got a, I got a Pico truck and I have another car. So I have two cars, but my Pico truck is old. Okay. And, uh, okay. you know. But it's just, so it's just, your, it's just a job truck, right? Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so on the budgeting yes. side, we're going to gift you Ramsey Plus, which includes every dollar premium. That's our budgeting tool that you can use on your phone. You can do this online. It's really easy to set up your budget. And what you're going to do is list out your income on one side and your expenses underneath that. And I want that to equal zero. So if you make, let's say, $3,000 a month, I want you to give every single one of those $3,000 a name, a job. So it's going towards something. It may be going towards savings. It may be going towards upgrading the truck eventually. It may be going towards some basic expenses. Do you have good insurance in place in all areas of your life? Health insurance, auto insurance? Okay, I want you to get health insurance today. Insurance. Okay. That's very, very important. Because medical bills will bankrupt you if you're not careful. You get hurt on the job, what's going to happen? How are you going to pay for those medical bills with no insurance? Right. So get that in place. Um, Hang on the line. Austin's going to pick up. We're going to make sure that he gets you plugged into Ramsey Plus. As part of that, Financial Peace University is included. I want you to watch all nine lessons of that because it's going to give you a baseline education on money. And I think that's going to equip you and give you some confidence, some freedom, some control over your situation. Because right now you just feel lost, don't you? You feel like I have no clue what to do next. Right, right. right. And I'm, I mean, I make uh, I make good money, and uh, you know, I have time. I have more time to make more money if I want to. You know, good. But I think you need know, to charge more for sure. Easy. What do you, are you charging an hourly rate? Uh, per job, and sometimes yeah, about hour. What do you like charge per hour? hour? Per hour, forty-five dollars. Let's up it. Up it. 50, 60, 75. People are going to be willing to pay that. It's so hard to find good, hardworking, reliable people these days. And hey, listen, we're also going to send you uh, uh, two books, okay? Actually, no, we're going to okay. send you three books. We're already wow. sending we're already Generous. Shipping here. So we're going to send you a copy of Total Money Makeover. I'm going to send you a copy of the Entree Leadership book to teach you how to run a small business. And I'm going to send you my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, about dealing with the traumas that have happened and then asking that one scary question, what do I do now? And this book's going to walk you through how to be well, my brother. Luis, we just, we're giving you everything we got. It's up to you to put this stuff into action. Thank you so much. It's one hour in the books. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. Scary, scary times. Give us a shout at 888-825-5225. We're here to talk common sense and put some perspective and some peace and some whoo back into your life. 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend George Camel, and we're taking your calls on just about everything. Let's go out to Dalen in Boise. Back to Boise, one of my favorite places. What's up, Dalen? Hey, how you doing? Good, my brother. What's up? <laughs> Hey, so before I actually uh, say my question, I just want to say that I'm very excited and happy that I DM'd both you and George on Instagram and got a response from both of you. Yes. So I feel like a rock star. So That was actually us, Dalen. Just want you to yeah, know. Yeah, hey, it actually is us, and here's my thought. If somebody takes a moment to reach out and say, <laughs> hey, I appreciate you, it's pretty lame for me not to say, hey, I'm grateful for that. Because those little notes, um, we get a lot of people drinking the Haterade and – those little notes are uh, just a little bit of coal to help the train get down the track a little bit further. So I'm grateful for you, man. Thanks for reaching out. So what's up? Perfect. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Um, so my question is, uh, I want to buy a car for my sister-in-law because she's graduating high school tomorrow. She's Ooh. walking tomorrow. Um, and I'm not aiming to buy this anytime soon, so to say, but within the next, I guess, few months. Um, but I'm just wondering, since it is a pretty big purchase, you know, depending how much I decide to spend on it, what percentage of my savings and or net worth should I put into that investment? I mean, put into that uh, car, knowing that it's not for my pleasure. Mm. Well, give us a little bit uh, of your financial picture. Yeah, so I make currently about 90000 a year in net, so in take home. Um, I'm on track to be making 125000 this year. I got quite the raise at work, so that's good. Quite the promotion. Awesome. Um, and I have about $160,000 in liquid cash in my savings. And then I have just, you know, I guess you can say 5000 or less in my checking. Um, but anyways. Um, and debt-free? Kind of, uh, debt-free, yes. Do you own a home? Um, yes, I do. Is it paid for or you got a mortgage? So I have a mortgage. Okay. How much? The mortgage is about eighteen hundred. No, no, no. How much do you owe on the house? Oh, I think I owe about. I would say two hundred eighty thousand, probably. Why do you have one hundred sixty thousand dollars in cash and two hundred eighty thousand yeah, mortgage? I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to be generous. I'm just I'm just prying to figure out where you're at and where she's at. How much are you wanting to spend on this car for her? And what's the heart behind it? So um, it's just to give her a good jump start in life so she has a good car in college, I guess. Um, and I'm only thinking to spend uh, probably no more than 12000 Okay. What is she – I mean, when I was in college, I was n- under no illusion that I had to drive a, a nice car. Does she have a car currently? She does not. Oh, so no vehicle right now? No vehicle. Do you know her financial situation? What's your relationship with your sister-in-law? Uh, so they're really close. My wife and sister-in-law are really close. Um, and, you know, we love her to death, of course. Um, we're family. So I don't know. I almost want to show off a little bit, but not show off, you know. So so that that was going to be my, my question here is – is a car something that she has need, needs and that you all have circled up? Or, and this is the pot talking to the kettle here, man. Are you wanting to buy a car? A, because you can. You're doing really well. But you also like right. going a little bit over the top to show and like, look at this. I'm a pretty generous guy. Because if you buy a gift for somebody to show them how great you are, you've completely wasted that gift. If you buy somebody okay. a gift to bless them and to give them a little bit more peace, to make bring them joy or laughter or kindness or whatever, meet a need for them, 
man, that's a whole other ball game, right? And so I don't know that there's right. such thing as a percentage. Um, George, off the top of yeah. my head, you got 160 grand cash buying a ten thousand dollar car for somebody. Yeah, it's not going to tank it's you. It's not You'll a big still hit your financial goals. Now, part of that's your emergency fund, right? Right. Okay. So there's the lesson there. I'm just looking at percentages. Hey, if you're going to drain your entire savings account to do this, that's not going to be a blessing to you. And so the way I look at it is if I did this anonymously, would it still feel just as good? That's a hard question uh, yeah. to ask yourself. Yeah. If you went, or, hey, if a car just showed up on her driveway, she had no clue it was for me, would I still have the same amount of joy? Or get three or Nothing four good. other family yeah. members who can pitch in twenty five bucks or a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or a thousand bucks, and you put everybody's name on it as though it came from everybody equally. Okay. E- even though you put the t- and here's here's the exercise. The exercise is I'm not giving somebody something to sh- to puff my chest out. I'm giving something to somebody sacrificially to help them out. And if you do this, here's the deal. So George, tell me if I'm if I'm wrong here. We'll sign off on it. You buy her a ten or twelve thousand dollar car. I think it's a beautiful gift. I think that's. I mean, of course, that's going to be a blessing to her. And you pull out forty or fifty grand for your emergency fund. The other hundred thousand bucks goes on your mortgage that same day. Is that fair? That's fair. Yes, yeah, I'm. I'm all for it. Let's knock this like thing that. out. What does your wife think about this? I mean, it's her, it's her sister. Is she all for this? Uh, yeah, she's all for it. Um, you know, her and I wanted to. Uh, get her an iPhone, but she already bought an iPhone herself. Um, what so what are her, so, your sister-in-law, what is her relationship with money? Do you know anything about her money habits? Is she bad with money? Is she great with money? So she's more of a spender than a saver, but I don't know how much she spends and how much she saves. Yeah. My, my only worry on her side is, is this almost enabling where she goes, sweet, I can keep being an idiot with money because now I don't have to worry about saving up for a car. And she doesn't get the satisfaction, the growth of having to save up and pay cash for that car. And now she drives it differently because of that. That's very true. true. Or maybe you get I her agree. this car and you sit down and say, we're going to buy you a car, but you have to commit to going to college debt free. Okay. Yeah, and okay. I'm going to go. bless you, but just going to this is going to come with some strength. So that's going to be the opposite of what we're talking about. We're not giving it away. Um uh we're not giving this thing away anonymously, but we're giving this thing with a set of this I'm setting you up to go make good in the world. But here's what making good's going to look like. And if you take this, great, but you're going to be committing to 4 years of this car is going to help you get from campus to your job and then to your second job because we're going to get through this thing debt free. Yeah, I want you to help her with her life and not just college. And so it's a little bit of the teach a man to fish approach where you go, I want to help her have these money principles that will guide her for life and not just give her a one-time gift and allow her to continue to outspend her income in the future. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Uh, thank you so much. All right. Love your heart on this, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so to think, think broadly, giving is for someone else. And it always feels good when you do it. Always. Best thing good. you can do with money. Just give it away. It's one of my yeah, it's one of the greatest things. We'll be right back on the Ramsey Show. Zach in Huntsville, Texas. What's up, Zach? How we doing? Uh, well, uh, first off, I need some thanks because about two months ago, I called you and uh, Dave was very, very angry about a divorce, and you guys pointed that out. And not going to lie, I was actually shocked when I heard the call later when the episode played, and you guys were right. I followed some of your advice, and I've calmed myself down quite a bit. So with that in mind, I'm calling back to hey, kind of hey, reiterate. Real quick. The, oh, 
Can I just tell yep. you, one of the mm-hmm. hardest drugs in the planet to get off of is the drug of anger. And the fact that you were able to exhale and say, I don't want to die young. I don't want to burn the people around me out. I'm worth more than that. And you're putting in the work to bring all that down. Dude, thank you. Like that's an inspiration to millions and millions and millions of raged out angry men. So thank you for that. That's hard, man. What you're doing is hard and I'm proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate that, sir. So what's up, man? Um, So now that I'm less angry and have a little more clear head considering I was going to try to get what I had called that day for, which is I need a little bit of budgeting advice on how to budget on a fluctuating income for the month and how to possibly get some accountability. Cause like I mentioned the last time I drive a truck for a living and I try to figure out how to get accountability for the days where my depression and issues with the divorce still hurting and stuff get to the point where I just want to say, screw the budget and go spend some money so that I have a little bit of, can have a little bit of fun or uh, do something to absolutely. occupy myself. All mm-hmm. right. So George is going to walk you through the budgeting and then we'll circle back at the end there for the depression and control stuff. Go ahead. So Zach, what's the range of your income being a regular? Give me a range. Um, I make, uh, I make on the high side, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, uh, apologies if this takes a few minutes. My stutter's acting up today. Um, oh, good, good, man. I make between fifteen and two grand a paycheck a- each week. Each Sometimes, week. Okay. if the freight's not great, it will go lower. Like this week, I got seven hundred bucks because I didn't run very much last week. Now, and are you able I'm, to make all your expenses right now? Okay. Are you covering all your bills just fine? I'm covering all the bills, and the couple of problems I run into is I've been splitting the bills up like budget, saying that this week I'm going to do, like this week, I paid my phone bill, and I paid for a dentist appointment that's coming up, and then like next week I'm going to pay half of my rent and something like that. I'm not going to go through the bills because I can't run off the top of my head. But but you're saying then, you're, you're barely keeping up with what's happening next week and next week and hoping the check hits and it's enough. Uh, kind of. And then I end up nickel and diming myself out whenever the uh, miscellaneous things that need done at the house come up. I, I got roommates that I'm uh, – the, 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 <laughs> they're helping me take care of my house while I'm on the road – and I am trying to control that and wondering about a budgeting strategy so that I don't keep nickel and diming myself out of the rest of my paycheck by accident because we're trying to save up to move. Okay. So And also I got the divorce and I may need a lawyer. I'm not sure yet. So when it comes to this budget, what I want you to do is you know your baseline income. You know on a really bad month, it may be 1500 bucks. So let's base it off of that. Then we're going to list out the A1 things that you know you need to cover. So that's going to be your four walls, food, utilities, shelter, transportation. So list out those expenses. And you know if we get $700, we know it's going to get covered first. We're going to keep the roof over our heads. We're going to put food on the table, put gas in the car. Beyond that, then you go down the list of priorities and go, okay, after that, it's going to be clothing. After that, it might be the Netflix subscription, whatever's on that list. And so whatever money comes in, you've already allocated towards those priorities. So that's the way to do it with a regular income. I'm going to gift you every dollar. How are you budgeting right now? I'm – you. Um, uh uh, I, I appreciate the gift. I already have a Ramsey Plus subscription. Though. Oh, great. Great. I'm, Nailed it. Are you using it? Somebody there can help me. I'm having trouble getting my bank to connect to it. I don't know why. Absolutely. Jump onto the contact page on Ramsey Plus, and we also have financial coaching available for you, and they can walk you through what that looks like with your specific budget. And you can uh, – yeah, so stay on the line, and AJ will walk you through that stuff. But uh, in the financial coaching, we'll, we'll hook you up with that as well. Um, you can ask very specific, detailed, here's my budget and here's my situation, and they'll walk you through that, okay? Um, okay, I greatly appreciate that, guys. That is really actually going to help me a lot more. Oh, uh, you bet. And here's what I want you to do. Before you go to bed tonight, I want you to get a Sharpie, and I want you to write a small note that says the following words. Don't forget to remember. 
And I want you to put that sign on your fridge. And I want you to put that sign on your steering wheel on your truck. Don't forget to remember. And this particular sentence has transformed my life. Because, like you, I'm kind of a hothead. And I'm always running and gunning and gunning and running. And we could sit down and talk about all the diagnostics we have. But at the end of the day... I get into my truck to go home and I don't, I literally don't even process the number of cans and trash and shirts that I've just thrown in there. And as I'm getting out of my car, I remember the phrase, don't forget to remember how good it feels to get back into a clean car on the way to work. And I will stop and then I will look and say, okay, this has to get taken care of. And for you, don't forget to remember how good it feels to wake up in the morning when you haven't had a fourth or fifth drink or a second or third or when you haven't had two frozen pizzas and slept on the couch. Don't forget to remember how good it feels next week when you still have 350 bucks in your account. And all we're doing is beginning to train our brain slowly to pause between that moment of anger, that moment of frustration, and then whatever coping strategy we're going to come up with next. Some people drink, some people take a swing at somebody in a bar, some people buy a bunch of crap, some people what fill in the blank. They call some girl they shouldn't call. Everybody's got their the things that they use to wallpaper and duct tape over their hurt. All I want folks to do is to have a gap. Here's the second thing. You have to get other men in your life that you go hang out with. Period. Whether you go bowling, you go fishing, you go play play golf for God's sake. And I, if you know how I think about golf, that's its own I've thing. I've seen John golf, and I don't want to see it. It's again. not great because I hate it. But go golf. Do something with other men. Why? Because you need friends. You need community. You got to have connection. And here's the third thing: you do need a lawyer. Okay. You've been avoiding it because the the this whole process is hard and it's scary, and that makes it really real. Once the that she filed papers on you? Neither of us have filed yet. I'm trying to navigate the fact that she skipped states. And I'm going to be honest, the only reason I debated the lawyer is because we don't have assets to dis- decide between. The only thing that I really want to keep is the dog, and that's only because she won't take care of her. And listen, she didn't take care of her while she was married. And what an attorney will help you with? Divorce. An attorney will help you, and it is expensive. It is. But you and you don't have assets now, but you might later. And what you want to do is close every loop, every uh, put a period at the end of every sentence, so that you don't get a house and get remarried and have two kids and have a couple of cars and suddenly you bought a second and third truck with cash and you've got a little bit of, of an operation running here and you're doing really great, and then one of these these sentences that you didn't tie up with an attorney. Um, comes back and your ex comes back and asks for some stuff that is supposedly hers and that could be a mess so get an attorney pay the money say you don't have any assets you're just looking for some help in the proceedings to put some periods at the end of these sentences so hang on the line we're gonna hook you up with this stuff don't hang up here and my brother i'm proud of you i'm proud of you you're making these tiny grinding little steps towards being well towards getting your feet back underneath you to fixing your business to get control of your money It's what we all have to do. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Keep going. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. George, we, I just, man, I got in last night from a week in Orlando. Started with the event that you and I and the rest of the gang did. Oh, Building yeah. Wealth event. Dude, which you was, have been on the road for like three weeks, it feels like. I've been out. Yeah, I'm tired, man. Um, but that Building Wealth event was crazy. It was awesome. 
Uh, Fantastic. Everybody came out there in Orlando, and then we hung around for Entree Summit. I, I've never seen anything like it. Here's a couple of things that made Entree Summit so great. I mean, there was like Jamie Lee Kerna and Jay Leno and Jocko, Jocko and uh, Jade Simmons and Will Gadara. Here's what was so rad was – Normally, you go to these events, and as a speaker, you know this, you're backstage in the green room, and there's a TV on that has the speaker speaking. But everybody's like going over their notes or everybody's chatting, la- laughing, playing dominoes, whatever. Dude, people were glued. It was cool to see the best of the best of the best getting off stage and running either back into the audience to watch the next speaker or to run back and get and pull a, a chair up in front of the screens to watch the next one, right? So you got Pat Lencioni and he gets right off stage and the next person like, okay, I got to watch the next guy, right? And it was incredible to see the people in, that you and I look up to who have quote unquote made it and they are still iron sharpens iron. Like, Lifelong okay, learners. Can I do this better? Can I even, ooh, that was a good one. I'm going to write that down. And um, man, I've never heard Will Gadara speak. I've never heard Jade Simmons speak. Incredible. It was next level. Yeah, it our was. leadership team was back here watching the live stream, and it was just as incredible. I'm sure the in-room energy was electric. And I love what I love to that point is if you watch Dave Ramsey, he's in the crowd taking more notes than almost anyone it's, yeah, on every speaker. That's right. And it's like, that's Dave Ramsey. He doesn't need to hear he's this. He's taking notes on every one of them, yeah. And he's soaking it all in. And so I love the mutual respect that you all have for each other in that room. I mean, a lot of brilliant minds, a lot of successful people – gathered in one place even the business owners in the crowd every time i'd be at summit i'm like these people are more successful than i am i'm just <laughs> exactly i'm happy to be in the room with them yeah it was something else and also uh, you and i were talking off air man it was a uh it's sobering what the american business women and american businessmen are going through right now mm. um there's three thousand people in that room and everybody the energy was off the chart everybody's excited and uh it was heavy what people are, are are facing, right? They can't afford to hire new people because it's so expensive or they just can't find them. We went for breakfast this morning, me and my family, and it was a two and a half hour event just to run down the street and go to breakfast together. I got back in town last night. We went to breakfast just as a family this morning. It's because there's no, there's no workers, right? And you got these trucking companies and plumbing companies and electric electricians who can't afford to get to and from jobs because the gas is so expensive. And so they're working 90 hours a week. They're trying to be good moms. They're trying to be good dads. They're trying to, and it's just, they found themselves in a vortex of hell and it's hard. Um, and so it was cool just to get with people in a room that could all exhale and say, I'm going through it too. But bravo to the entree team mm. here. It was just something next level. I was the best I've heard Dave speak. It was the whole, Everyone it was something on their else. Game. Yeah, it was something else. And it was, uh, you and I were talking, you mentioned that sometimes you're backstage, you know, there's, there's, it feels like there's a limited amount of pie, right? And like, ooh, if that guy does really good on his That means talk, I have to do worse. I, then that means he took something from it. Man, it was a spirit of, oh, you did that good? That's so great. I'm going to, it was, everybody was, there was, there was a never ending amount of pie back there. It was just something else. So kudos awesome. to everybody. Um, and if you missed it, you better be at the next one. Get your tickets. It's in Nashville next year. It's going to be a hometown for us. And, uh, man, you would be out of your mind to miss that if you're a business um, Yeah, if you're in a leadership position or want to be, this is the event for you. Golly, it was incredible. Just world class. Glad you made it back safe with the team. Yeah. Again, I was asking you all. I I don't know. I thought it was Wednesday, but it's Thursday. John doesn't know where he is right now. That's exactly right. This is the Dr. John Deloney Show. (laughs) It might be. Let's go to William in Greenville, South Carolina. What's up, William? Hey, Dr. John, um, absolutely love the new book. Thank you, George. Man. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, George, I got a question for you. I've been scouring TikTok, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh. answer, so I figured I'd bring it to no, you. No, William, do not get financial advice you're too on smart. TikTok. But. If you're, too, you're too smart for TikTok, William. Oh, no. <laughs> What's going on with you? All right, so I just went up yesterday and picked up my second child from college, and I realized – um, we've got extra money in her 529. We've also got extra money in my older daughter, um, her 529. And I still have a son that's a sophomore in college, and he is going to have some extra money in his. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, you know, 
everybody says, wait on, you know, save this money because they might, and two of them are going to grad school, but we'll be fine with that. Um, um, but why, why wouldn't I continue to fund these 529s? I was, I was thinking, you know, I should still continue to put money in here, even though I know they're not going to use them because by the time they get grown up and have children that are ready to go to college, I can give them, I can skip my my children's generation, give them to them, and they will have had an extra round of compounding, so I'll have a lot more money. And I've talked to a couple of – I've talked to two different financial advisors about them, and one of them was like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. The other one was like, that's a terrible idea to tie up that amount of money for that amount of time. And I was just calling to see – what you thought about it, because it seems to me I should be able to, with a little bit more money, super fund, by the time they're old enough, my grandchildren. That's cool, man. That's leaving a legacy. I don't don't think your financial advisor is thinking that way. I think they're thinking, well, that's less money for me. He's not investing (laughs) with me. William, (laughs) hey, just, dude, you're thinking generationally, and that's how wealth gets, good man. Are you on track for retirement, William? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? Fifty-three. What's your net worth? Uh, about twenty. Golly. Twenty million. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he just—that's my a great eyeballs mic drop. just fell out of my head, uh, man. Yeah. Dude, you do what you want. <laughs> you should be giving well, us I, advice. I, I, look, how did you I get to twenty million job. dollars at fifty-three? Just curious. I have a great job. I have a lot of. Um, I have a great job, um, but I don't got twenty million dollars. <laughs> a, 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 a very well funded job, right. and um, um, from the time I um, started working, I saved my money, and I now have several paid for warehouses that are paying rent through the roof, and um, just very lucky. Wow. Um, very fortunate, work, work very hard, but, but lucky as well. Well, you're inspiring, man. The truth is you can cash flow college for the next three generations. <laughs> you don't even have to worry about a, five, I, I, a 529. Now, it's a great tax advantage strategy to save for college, but the truth is, and Dave Ramsey would tell you this, he'd go, people like you, they're able to cash flow it if there's not enough. And so clearly there's going to be an abundance in the 529s. You're okay with that. You can change the beneficiary to the grandkid if there's money left over. There's a lot of things you can do with that money. Uh, so I'm all good with that. And again, you don't know what the kids are going to be doing with grad school. And man, they've got options when you've got all that money in 529s and a dad like you who uh, who can cash flow it and help them go to school debt free. Here's, here's what I like about it, William, is um, it protects the investment that you have in your heart and mind the, this gift that you want to go towards college, it it seems to be a pretty clean way to make sure this money is used for educational expenses, right? Well, John, it's funny you say that because one of the, like one of the one of the financial advisors told me he said, "Why don't you just pay him out of your brokerage accounts? Why don't you, if you want to do that? Why don't you just why don't you just pay him out of your brokerage accounts?" And I'm and I'm telling him I'm saying, "Look, I can put this over here in this little bucket." And forget about it forever. I don't ever have to think about it again. And it's and tax free. It is tax free. And if you get hit by and, a bus, and, and William, it, exactly. And it grows tax free. It's a, it's basically an IRA for my grandchildren that haven't been born yet for them to go to college. I think you should be his financial advisor. That's, a, yes, you need to call him and say you're willing to take his business, but the fee is going to be high. I think you're exactly right. And uh, this is a way to say, hey, we took care of your educational expenses. Whatever college may look different in 20 years, but. Investing in education is always going to be a good way to use I want to be William when I grow up. I, William, you have set the bar, my brother. It's an honor to talk to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put some money in that and take care of generations to come. We'll be right back.
Well, folks, it's been proven over and over again. You can crush your financial, personal, and professional goals. Whether you want to pay off debt, land that dream job, or build better relationships, you can make it happen. And we're putting our number one best-selling books and tools in the Ramsey $10 sale to give you the proven plan on how to knock out those goals. So if you have money goals you're trying to hit, if you want to learn how to get out of debt and build wealth, you can do that with the Total Money Makeover or Rachel's book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, just 10 bucks each. And as you're making summer plans, you can have some fun and meaningful conversations with the people you care about with my friend Dr. John Deloney's Questions for Humans Couples Edition or Friends Edition. And if you've got a high school grad and you want to give them a gift that will help them escape the trap of student loan debt, pick up the Graduate Survival Guide or our brand new high school gift pack. There is something for everyone in this sale, and I know 10 bucks doesn't get you much anymore, but it does uh, here at Ramsey Solutions with the $10 sale. A lot of value for your money. These books and tools will help you make a plan today to crush your goals, and right now they're up to 67% off. So go shop the Ramsey $10 sale at RamseySolutions.com before the sale ends. Dude, $10 of gas will get you a quarter tank. It's amazing. That's sad. I mean, a, a quarter gallon, I mean. I saw a video. It went up to $200. In California, it was like a tw- you know they were filling up twenty six, twenty seven gallons at six bucks a oh, gallon. Oh wow! It hurt my brain. Two hundred dollars. Nope. I'm really missing the uh, Prius that I crashed into the wall. Oh gosh, that's a story for another time. Have you shared that on air? I have. That's a really expensive breathing exercise wow. now with gas prices, man. It's a hilarious story. Now knowing you're safe, it's yeah. a hilarious story. <sighs> but man, I wish I'd had that now instead of that tr- wow. truck out there. Yeah. All right, let's go to Matt in Hartford. What's up, brother Matthew? How are you doing today? Good, my man. What's up? Thank you for taking my call, first of all. Uh, so I've got a bit of a difficult financial situation. I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in this position, but I've still kind of, I've got a lot of expenses piling up and I'm kind of just worried about how the best, what the best way is to navigate it. Go for uh, it. So I was able to purchase a house in cash. Um, it's been a dream of mine for many years and I saved up for many years. And I was also in a very fortunate position to be uh, gifted a sum of money from my family as well. And, and all that together meant that I was able to buy a house in cash. But the problem that I'm running into now is that I have a very large amount of repairs that needs to get done with the property. And I have a very limited amount of cash left after spending all of it on buying the house. And I'm just wondering about the best way to potentially cash flow some of these repairs and if my income is going to be enough to do that and if I might need to get a second job potentially uh, to in order to help pay for some of it. Okay. Um, so what's your income? So I just got a new job and it'll be 44000 a year. And how much money do you have in the bank? Liquid Right now cash I savings. have about 11000 11, in cash. I just wrote a check for 6800 bucks. so when that clears, I'm, I, I have eleven grand left in cash. Okay. And is that your emergency fund at that point or part of it? Yes. So we yes, got to rebuild really that. That's my, my emergency fund. Okay. So what I want you to do is separate out your emergency fund from the home repair fund because I'm worried that they become two in one and all of a sudden you are very, very broke. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. How? What's the urgency of these repairs? Can you do them over the next six months? I mean, is it a safe place to live? I'm, I'm hoping that I can. I think I can, but I don't 100% know. Like, There's some things that I need urgently addressing. Like, I just wrote a check for 6800 bucks for asbestos removal. That was urgent. I had to get that done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got electrical problems, and I've got an electrician coming next week to uh, hopefully sort out that. But I'm guessing it's going to be – I don't know exactly how much it's going to cost me, but I've, I've estimated it's a few thousand because the, the amount of electrical work that needs to get done is expensive. Half the lights in my place don't work. Was this uh, a fixer-upper? Yeah, wire. why'd you buy this house, man? Did you get an inspection and appraisal on it? I uh, No, I didn't get it. I, uh, my realtor advised me to waive the inspection because of the market that we're in with the real estate market being what it is. I was fortunate. I didn't have to pay over asking price. I paid exactly asking. Oh, you're paying paying for it. You're not fortunate, brother. You're paying. Your, your real estate agent encouraged you because they got the, the fee. Man, how much did you pay for this house? 200000 well, the good news is you don't have a mortgage, and so you have more margin in your income. I would get the side job in order at least until the repairs are done and it's in good living condition. Have you, Matt, have you sat down and written out all of the repairs you're going to need? I, I have uh, I have a pretty extensive list. I, there are some things that I don't know for sure exactly when they need to be done. For instance, I know I need a roof done, but I was told that I might have up to a year 
before I really need to get, need to get it done. Like it, I, I was told that it wasn't, it's not something I need to get done tomorrow. Like All right. Not- if I'm you, here's what I would do. This is me just telling you exactly what I would do if I'm in your shoes. I would pay the money and I would um, go get an inspe- a home inspection and have somebody, a professional walk through it from, from nose to tail. And It'll say, cost you a few hundred bucks. Yes. And it's going to be money well, well spent. And they're going to give you a list, a 20 or 30 page document with photos and say, here's everything that would make the house just able to be sold. And then you can ask the inspector, they walk through it with you as part of this and say, what has to be done right now? And that way, it's, that will give you some peace because le- you don't even know how big of an elephant you're trying to eat right now. You're just scarfing down every little bit that you can. And what you're going to do is, is like George said, you're going to end up broke. And you're going to end up fixing one thing and you should have spent the money over here. So, dude, you need a plan. Back up. Slow down. You, I, me, I'm real tempted to tell him George to sell the house. Because, dude, this could be a $50,000 hole. I would you, start with the inspection, and then the inspector goes, dude, this you're looking at a hundred grand to get the – I mean, who knows? If you need a new roof, the foundation's messed up, the asbestos – I mean, it keeps adding up. Right. This thing's a loss. So I would get that thing – I would get an inspection done. They're going to give you a big report, and you walk through it with them. The inspectors that I've worked at in the past are – they're just great and they work for you. So they're going to tell you the truth. Um, and I'd get that done ASAP, man. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to know what kind of hole you've dug. And then that's going to dictate what kind of side job you need to get or two side jobs or three side jobs. But please remember what George said. Do not just dump all of your quote unquote extra money. That's not being used for bills into the same pot. You've got to have an emergency fund that sits over here for true emergencies when that roof caves in on you, right? And you got to go get that thing fixed. Yeah, this house is very quickly turning from a blessing into a curse. That's right. And I'm, I'm proud of him for saving up the money. And of yeah. course, there was some family money that came in there to help him do this with cash, which is amazing. Yeah. But a lot of people right now, John, are making some bad decisions when it comes to housing because of fear. That's right. And because of greed. And they're going, well, now's the time. If I don't do it now, I'll never do it. Right. And my realtor said, my realtor said, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. That's right. And if you're not comfortable with it, get a new realtor. But do not waive inspections and appraisals because you end up in a situation like this. Even with no mortgage, he's stressed out to his eyeballs. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I just personally, I had homes inspected when we were trying to buy in Nashville. And you know what it's like trying to buy in Nashville. And I walked away from a few deals because I didn't know once we put a shovel in the ground, I don't know what that septic's going to actually the damage. You know, it's going to be 4,000 to 60. Well, that's a big margin, right? And so I walked away from a few deals. And to my realtor, was, it was hard. It was frustrating. But, dude, I'm not going to buy a home. I'm not going to buy that big of an investment without somebody telling me what I'm what – I'm It's the biggest against. purchase of your life. That's this right. is not the time to go, yeah, we'll buy it sight unseen as is. That's I'm right. sure it'll be fine. It'll be cool, man. Yeah. Because, man, those those repairs whoo, could be a mess. Let me ask you this, George. So um, let's back up and say this guy could do this over. Principle-wise, financially, if he, instead of putting, um, and I don't remember exactly what he said, how much he, uh, how much did he say he got in the... It was it, 200 grand, so he okay. paid cash. Okay. If he had mortgaged 125 of that, I mean, I'm sorry, he had mortgaged 75 of that, put 125 down, and then kept $75,000 for potential repairs and then once that smoke clears to put the rest of that money is that yeah i like that plan because then you're putting 75 percent down on this house and that you you leave yourself some cash to live with right well and if you're buying a house that you don't know much about because you didn't get an inspection yeah. i'm gonna assume there's some problems i need to fix and therefore i need to have the funds to make sure i can fix that yeah so anyone who ta- anytime a big cash reserve on top of that gonna sell you something and they say you're not allowed to look and see if it actually works or not that should be a big red flag. Maybe I shouldn't buy that. Yeah, if I'm buying a car from a stranger, I'm going, I'm going to get this thing inspected. Yes. And that's a car, that's not a, a car, house. Not a house, that's right. So I treat it the same way. Excellent, man. Well, hey, thank you so much, everybody, for calling. George, great job. Appreciate it. People in the folks in the booth, the peeps in the booth. Thank you all so, so much. And I'm John Deloney. Listen, be kind to one another. No amount of worrying is going to bring gas prices down. It's time for us to get into action. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. Love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. This 
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your money, your debt, your successes, and your life, your relationships, your mental health, your work, all of it, right here at 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend George Camel, and we are taking your calls on just about everything. So give us a shout. Uh, let's go out to New York. How about that? Let's go to New York and talk to Vicky. What's up, Vicky? Hi, how are you, John? Outstanding. How are you? I'm awesome. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I listen to Dave and you and George every day on the way to work and on the way home from work. So well, I'm um, grateful. I, We're so grateful. I, <laughs> I have two things I need to confirm with you before I ask my question. All right. Uh, the first thing is, um, at full retirement age, which for me will be 66 and eight months, and my husband 66 and six months, there is no limit to the amount of income you can make without affecting your Social Security. Is that correct? I think so. You probably you've studied this more than I have. Okay, um, I think that's correct. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask was money that's put into Roth IRAs, the deposits are done with after tax income, correct? Yes. Okay. And any money that's in those accounts grows tax-free. And then when you start to withdraw it, the principal and the interest is tax-free? Yes. The whole thing. When you withdraw it? Every bit of withdrawal just goes into your pocket. Okay, so here comes my question. So my husband and I have about $450,000 in traditional IRAs that were um, rolled over from company 401k plans from previous jobs. So that is all sitting in a traditional IRA. And our income currently right now is about $125,000 a year, which is slowly going down because my husband is semi-retired. By my best calculations, our income in retirement between a teaching pension, Social Security, and small part-time jobs is going to be about the same as it is right now. Great. So I was wondering, <laughs> I'm hopefully that's where it will be in a few years. <laughs> but my question was, is would it be worth our while now to start slowly taking some of that money out of a 401k, I mean, I'm sorry, out of the traditional IRA? take the tax hit, and then put it into a Roth IRA, which it could grow, you know, exponentially without having to pay taxes on it. Well, I wouldn't say that just as an overall plan, that's the right move. Because as you mentioned, there's big tax implications there. And it's, you know, six dozen, half the other, whatever the saying is, but (laughs) whatever that is. But you're going to pay taxes on the traditional side if you take it out, like you're mentioning. Or you're going to pay a big tax bill to turn it into tax-free growth. Either way, and so I'd rather I, you start from here. So I would. You're saying should I take out a little bit of money and convert it to the Roth portion? Yes, over the next four to five years, because we won't. We hopefully won't have to even dip into this until there's mandatory withdrawals at seven. I think it's seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, we have, oh, so you're ta- you're, all, did, you're, think, you're thinking about cashing out your tra- your traditionals early, paying the penalty plus the tax to roll well, that they money have into penalties at their age. Well, I don't think there are penalties. Yeah. My husband is sixty five. Yeah, so okay. Good there. okay. Here's the thing: I just met with uh, one of our smart investor pros um, two days ago, and we were talking about this exact situation. And there's actually a strategy they use where it's smart to have some on the traditional side and some on the Roth side. Do you have a Roth portion as well? Uh, We do not have a Roth, no. So how much do you have total in retirement outside of pensions and Social Security? Is it this 450? 
It's this. It's four hundred and fifty thousand in traditional IRA, a house that's worth about three seventy five. We have about seventy five left in a mortgage, and about thirty five thousand dollars sitting in um, in standard savings accounts. And that's kind of your emergency fund. Yes. Okay. That is my emergency fund. Do you guys have a financial advisor currently? Yes, we actually do. We have somebody that we've used for years, but we don't see him until November, December. And Whoa. I'm starting to think about this because it's getting cold. Well, Can we you see not... him once a year. Okay. To I would date accounts. I would definitely have see him next week. See him next week and go, hey, what's the best move here? Because we can't get into all the nitty gritty details of this, and I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. But my gut says. This is not a wise move to all of a sudden convert this into Roth. Maybe a portion at a time, but it may be wise to use some of this traditional money, use it as income coming in, and pay the tax bill as that happens, as taxed as ordinary income. Well, we would never take the whole thing and convert it because we don't have that kind of money to pay the taxes. But the the thought that it can grow tax-free when we want to take it out, even if we took a small chunk, $20,000 or $30,000 a year, transferred transferred it over to a Roth, would that be worth our while? And My that, gut tells me the math isn't going to work there. Yeah, I think when you're, when you're in your 20s, your 30s, it makes sense to convert it and let that money grow for a long period of time. But as you're in retirement age, this is where I go. They're going to run some numbers on both sides and show you on paper uh, which one makes more sense. And my gut says, I could be wrong, but my gut says leaving it in traditional side and just pulling that money out and paying the taxes on it as you go is going to be your best bet. And Vicki, I would tell you this, um, you are looking at the potential for growth. So I'm going to take this hit here and you're leaving one giant variable untouched on the table. And that is the great, a great gift you can give yourself heading in retirement is no debt liabilities whatsoever. And you still owe well, 75 goal, grand on your mortgage. Right. I would, but the goal here is, is that when we do retire, there will be a move to a cheaper part of the United States. New York is not kind to its um, retirees, right. which whatever we walk away from with this house is what we're going to put into a house with no mortgage. So you're going to pay cash so there for the will next not one. Be a, Yes, correct. Okay. Could you use your future so cash flow to pay off the mortgage as you guys head into retirement? Um, the goal is is that the house will be paid for by the time we retire, that we will not Love have it. a mortgage here. Okay, awesome. that's, that's good then to get that knocked out of the way. I, George, I hear a lot of people talk about, I'm going to do this, I want this investment strategy, I want this, I want this, and they're heading into retirement. They got $200,000 or $100,000, seventy-five left on their mortgage. And man, anything goes sideways there. Uh, and they lose this or the market crashes or their returns are lower than they think they're going to be, that house payment stays the same every month. Right? Oh, yeah. You get that sucker off the table, Get man. rid of that fixed expense. That's exactly and I, right. Man, talking to our Smart Vester Pro, I was just like, I was first of all nerding out with him, but it was so helpful to go, oh, these guys don't just hit a button and invest and take your money. That's not what this is about. A good financial advisor is a coach that looks at your entire money picture right. and helps you be really strategic when it comes to taxes yep. and estate planning and all the pieces of your puzzle to make sure you do the right thing. I love that, man. Hey, we'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. Five two two five. My brain stopped there for a second. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. George, it was like a glitch in the matrix. It John. was, man. My uh, yeah, I'm running on fumes. I looked over and I thought, oh my gosh, he is a robot. Yeah, my, my brain stopped. Wow, just learning how well, to love. In my possession, John, I've got your questions for humans conversation cards, uh, friends edition. I Excellent. didn't go with couples edition, and I thought, you know what? We got to make Kelly happy here. She's fading in the booth. So let's read. <laughs> let's read some of these off. Can I hit you with let's, one? Let's, 
I would prefer you not hit to hit me, but yeah, you can. I don't, think I'd, I don't think I could hurt you if I did. Agree. Who's one speaker, author, or thinker who's made a big impact on you? Who man. One speaker. Off the top of my head, um, author. Man, there's some old authors that I love, like Twain and those guys. But um, recent, Terry Reels is an important author for me. Um, speaker, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, Jade Simmons this weekend, or this week, and Will Gadara, uh, the restaurateur and the pianist, man. Jade Simmons and Will Gadara were just lights out speakers and just humans to be around. Um, so, yeah, they're very inspirational. Mm, good stuff. I'll give you the Sunday school answer, Dave Ramsey. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but for real, though, Seth Godin, I love his books. Yeah. Brilliant thinker, brilliant author, always an inspiring read. Uh, speaker, absolutely, Dave, for sure. John Deloney, second. Gonna, second, huh? Yep. Hmm, that's I fair. I would have gone one-two punch. <laughs> have fl- you ever walked out on a movie or concert? What was it? Oh, this is going to be controversial. Okay. I've walked out of two concerts in my life just because they were so bad. Oh, Number one, Bob Dylan. Ouch. I was he was that bad. Devastated huh? at how bad it was. I he just was couldn't his, wrap my head in his old it. age. You just couldn't swing it anymore. Yeah, uh, it was rough. I don't. I don't know if he's having a bad day. It was just rough. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I didn't know what was happening. And we're rough. off the air, John. Just like I know. That. And to all of you, I know he's the greatest of all time. And Partridge in a Pear Tree. And he's a great songwriter. And yada yada. My whole family was singing along to some Bob Dylan today in the car. So it's not that. It's a concert. It's rough. And then mm-hmm. Maroon Five. I couldn't hang, man. Too many tats. No, not the tats are fine. It was like the skin tight black tank top and like uh, kind of giving it to the mic stand a little bit. I was like, dude, I, I don't not know, for man. you. I think I'm good. I That's I'm amazing. Good. What about you? Uh, so one comes to memory. It's a sad story. My ex girlfriend. Um, we went to see Grizzly Bear and Radiohead, two of my favorite bands. Okay. We get stuck in traffic. We miss Grizzly Bear. She's so upset that we leave early when Radiohead starts playing. Y'all didn't stay? We didn't stay. She was so upset. I don't know. I, I was so you like, missed well, arguably one of the greatest bands in the history of music. Yep. Because for a, a temper tantrum, huh? That was the beginning of the end for me, John. I can see how that, that worked that way. I was out. What's a song that makes your ears bleed? Um, There's a few. Anything by Smashing Pumpkins, the whole oh, catalog. Wow. Uh, hey, man, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. Just when any time that I hear the psalm, I'm like, ah, I got to go. Um, those are the two. Wow. What about you? A uh, song that makes my ears bleed. Who Let the Dogs Out gives me hemorrhoids. They don't make my ears bleed yeah. as much as it makes it fire out the back end. I'm trying to think. Probably stuff that you listen to would make my ears bleed. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Social media, is it good for us or bad for us and why? Um, I think it's 95% not good. 5% good. Oh, that's a good take. I was going to go 95% good, 5% bad. <laughs> I know, but you're wrong most of the time. I know. It is a dark place, but yeah. I, I do think it's an amazing technology that allows us to do amazing things. That's right. We do, it's not social media's fault. It's our fault. There you go. Is what I'm trying to say. I think there was a time when cocaine was used as it was – it was – People understood there was a medicinal benefit to it. It was in Coca-Cola. And then, well, it was also used for nasal surgeries and things. We misused it. And then it got misused, and now they took it away from everybody. Last one. What's your favorite cheap meal that you'll always love no matter how much money you make? Oh, Dorito tacos, no question. Wow. That fast. Taco Bell, man. They do things right. John, they just because it's right. cheap, I mean, it costs you your health. <laughs> yeah, you still no, love but it. but it gives me my joy. Temporarily, and then it gives you gas. It, uh, it, it incredible amounts, but so good. What about you? Kelly regrets every handing us these cards. <laughs> what about you? Uh, you know, I'm a Chipotle fan. It costs seventy two dollars for a burrito. No, How's not, that your cheap? Meal? Not the way I do it, John. You're so bougie. I out. get four meals out of one bowl. Do you take okay? your Tesla over there and? Why go do you to have Chipotle, to bring the Tesla up? Just going slumming with the Chipotle. Listen, I try to, I try to use Chipotle your is an anniversary meal good. in my house. That's unbelievable. Well, fast food's tough for me. I mean, Chick Fil A kids meal. That's a go to for me that right. I get a lot of judgment for. You officially are on friendship probation, and you should stop talking. Let's go to Joseph in Kalamazoo. Hey, Joe, what's up? Hey guys, Thanks sorry for you had to hear that, John Joseph. George. I apologize. Yes. <laughs> All good. All good. What's up, brother? Hey, um, so I am 22 years old and I have 20K in debt and I uh, am currently paying off three very predatory payday loans that are eating me alive inside. Mm. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Awesome. So how can we help, man? Well, 
I guess first and foremost, those three payday loans have some of the most egregious uh, APR rates I've seen in my entire life. Two of them have, one of them has 400%, and the worst one out of the three has 690% APR. God. 40 payments. What? Yeah. Is there a prepay penalty? There is no prepay penalty. How much is on it? all three of those loans? How much are they? The in, in, in some the worst the in some it's about one hundred eight hundred. I'd say about eleven hundred in total. All three. How much do you make? I make about forty five thousand a year after taxes. What caused you to go to a payday lender out of all people in the first place? Um, I've been struggling living paycheck to paycheck, and and I had no emergency fund, and. Most days, my bank account is either negative or has barely a few ones in it. And so I've had to make some pretty hard decisions, uh, poor decisions nonetheless. But uh, All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to turn over to George here for a second, but um, I want you to get a couple of bricks. I want you to go find them. Even if you have to go to the, grocery, I mean, to the hardware store and pay, pay 50 cents for one, okay? Get a couple of them. And mm-hmm. I want you to get some masking tape and put it on there. Or just get a, a magic marker and write on there. A stupid thing you did. A dumb loan and a dumb loan. Or I got desperate and I found myself negative, whatever. And I want you mm-hmm. to hold that sucker for a minute until it gets heavy. Mm-hmm. And I want you to go to the nearest lake or river and throw it in there. And be <laughs> done with this. Okay? Because here's what I can hear it okay. in your voice. The shame of what happened to you is pro- prohibiting you from launching into outer space to get this stuff knocked out. Every step mm-hmm. you take is you're carrying the, well, yeah, so stupid. I can't believe this. And now this 600% interest rate is a slap in your face every day, but you're feeling it as a stupid tax, right? Yeah. Stop. Yes, I am. Stop. Get done with it. Joseph, how much money do you have in the bank right now? Negative $445. Oh, so sorry, man. What's your day job? I, uh, I'm an HVAC, uh, heating and cooling technician. Okay. Can you work extra hours? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm going to be working 80 hours a week until this mess is cleaned up. And I'm definitely focusing on these insane payday loans first. And you're going to be on a shoestring budget eating rice and beans more than ever before. My favorite meal. So that's that's good news. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook you up with a financial coaching session with one of our trained financial coaches and gift you one year of Ramsey Plus to dive into the budget, focus on that, because that's what you can control. And every dollar is going to have a name, and we're not going to spend any money on anything but this debt and keeping the lights on. That's it. Are you in? I am in. Boom. Austin's going to pick up. We're going to make sure he gets you connected to one of our financial coaches and Ramsey Plus. Watch all the financial peace videos. I want you to get so angry at this that you are standing outside of the payday lender with a sign that says, avoid this scam. And I want you driving for Uber or Uber Eats or something by this weekend. You got 48 hours to make that happen. I want you down at a local coffee shop working from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m., to get another three hours in, go f- pick up a, a shift in the evenings washing dishes. Your life is over for the next 24 months, and then everything looks different. How the- do payday lenders sleep at night? I have no idea. On how very they do comfortable it. mattresses paid on the desperation of hurting 690% people. 690 percent interest. That's is disgusting. there a bigger scam in America? It's disgusting. Sorry, my brother. Hang on. We'll be right back. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window covering. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Rules and restrictions apply. Today's question comes from Brandon in Indiana. 
Should I move out of my parents' basement or not? I'm 21 and I earn 2800 a month. The apartment that I'm considering is 900 a month. My parents think it's the dumbest idea ever because I'm getting married soon. They believe I should wait until I'm married and then buy a house with my wife. I would prefer to get my own apartment, which my fiancé would move into when we marry, so we can save together for a house. Is it smarter to stay in my parents' basement and save money until I get married, or get my own place now and finally be on my own? I'm ready to grow up and learn how to love life, but I feel like my parents are holding me back, and I have no one in my life to give me real advice. <laughs> that took a turn at the end there. <laughs> Very confusing. Oh, man. On this show, we often get a run of 21-year-olds who are incredible yep. and doing great things. And then occasionally we get the email from a 21-year-old and we go, there it is. There right? it is. So um, I want you to be grown up and on your own too. And by the tone of this email, you're not there yet. Uh, I think everybody here is I – don't, I don't have any problem whatsoever – with you living with your parents until you get married, you're a few months out. And I don't know what getting married soon means. To some people, that's two years, and to some, that's two months. But man, if you're getting married in a few months, hang on. Part of growing up is delaying gratification, doing the hard thing because it's going to be better for you in the long run, man. There's got to be more here because just living in your parents' basement, I don't know if they're overbearing or they're mean or they're abusive or who knows but just based on this email dude stick it out and then i wouldn't buy a house i'd get an apartment right i mean yes i, I wouldn't run absolutely. buy a house that i can't afford go get an rent somewhere for a year once you're married yes. stack up a whole bunch of cash because by the looks of it i doesn't sound like he's ready to even buy a house on the financial side just the right. lo logistics of it so i would rent for a year once you're married then save up a bunch of cash and uh, then buy a house at that point if you guys feel like you're ready. It's that simple. I think it's important to note I'm ready to quote-unquote grow up. Um, that that phrase gets people into trouble sometimes. They go out and buy cars that they can't afford. They buy homes they can't afford. They run off and accelerate relationships into long-term, like binding long-term agreements like marriage before they're ready and under the guise of, I just need to grow up. It's time, whatever that means. Well, he's getting married at 21, which is fairly young. It's very, very young. Yeah, yeah, very young. And so that's fine. I'm going to hate on that, but man, you need to get some wisdom in your life. If you cannot trust your parents for wisdom, you need to find a couple of men in your community, whether that's an old coach or an old uh, band instructor or a pastor in your community that you trust somebody to sit down and not just ask a bunch of questions to, but somebody say, hey, I'm getting married in a few months. Would you start having coffee with me once a week just so I can I, – I need some wisdom and I'm not getting it from home, so I'm going to go find it somewhere. And premarital um, counseling would be great if you haven't done that. Really important. Great to place to get advice. Yeah, because the other person you're leaving out of this equation is your wife. Uh, does she want to have an apartment? Was, I mean – Where do you want to live? Where yeah. are you going to work? We just, There's a lot of – pieces of the equation here we got to figure out yeah but i'll tell you brother brandon slow down slow down make a game plan the game plan is not i'm ready to grow up the game plan is how much money do i need to get into an apartment when i get married how long am i going to be here what's the agreement with my parents and so on and so forth so get a plan man and just reverse engineer it and work the plan right, let's go to evelyn in dayton ohio what's up evelyn is it elvin elvin sorry elvin yep. dude i blew that i'm sorry elvin <laughs> You're good. How's it going? I'm. If I could read, it'd be going better. But I'm doing good, man. How about you? <laughs> doing great. Hey, a uh, little background here. I am going to be quitting my job here in about a week. Why are you quitting? And going to something new. Why are you quitting? Um, just uh, time to move on. I should say. Long story, but yeah. Okay. Usually that means um, there's a big long story, but go for it. Uh, so I'm in the residential construction business. I'm currently a project manager, cabinet designer, uh, 21 years old, been married for about nine months and have about, uh, $80,000 in cash debt free. Okay. Nice. Um, so I am looking to either go to another contractor, uh, doing project managing as well. Um, for relatively the same pay or go out on my own as a carpenter. Okay. What would be your recommendation? Just, uh, I was just thinking, you know, the way the economy is, um, uh, didn't want to go in head over heels thinking I can make it. And then are you going to have a gap in, in income 
If you're quitting in a week and the other one's not lined up, do you have this uh, other no. job? It, it it would be right into the next job. Okay. So. I would do both if I were you. That's my take. John may disagree. But I would take this other job and start to build your carpentry business on the side and see if you like it and see if you can get clients and ongoing clients and create enough income that you can slowly take a step from the dock onto the boat if that's what you well, want to do. Well, I, I have done that in the past. So I've been doing side jobs for, uh, I don't know, probably two years. Um, have you made I enough money have, that you think you could make this your full-time gig? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I got basically five jobs waiting on me right now if I were to take them. What's driving so. you towards doing your own thing versus working for someone? Uh, just being able to... Um, you know, set my own schedule and, um, you know, hopefully make some more money. I've talked to several uh, individuals that do finish carpentry in the area, and they have all told me, you know, go on your own. There's plenty of work out there. It's not like you're not going to find work. Um, the, but, the, the one thing that's you know, given me pause, Elvin, is your response to George's question, do you make it enough money? And you said, I think so. And so, for whatever reason, I would say for that I would say yes. Okay, yes, I do. Well, you do for for four jobs, right? And as a uh, what you have to ask yourself is, how many of the jobs am I getting are offshoots of the project management job I'm doing? Do I have money for marketing, or do I have some sort of way to go get a new book of business to build something? while I'm doing the job and also marketing and also taking the calls and making sure I'm hitting all of my... So you have to have a fully realized business plan before you decide to take this brand new wife of yours on a ride. Right. And you've got four jobs. So I want to hear your answer to, do you have money lined up? Yes, I've got four jobs in the hopper. I've already done X and done Y and I've joined this trade association and I'm doing this and then you're going to be all ready. Um, how much do you make at your project management job? Um, gross about sixty one five. Okay. Um, just off what I've just recently paid a carpenter, you should be able to make that in a, in a year. Do you feel confident about that? Yes, I do. Okay. So I want you to be very specific. And if, if this is something that's outside your wheelhouse, which it would be for most people, sit down with somebody who can help you do the math on that and say, here's how much insurance is going to cost, both insurance for my jobs that I'm going to have to have because you're going to have to be bonded and insured, and your, right. your insurance is going to go – like oh, get down and map all that out. Do I have the truck? Do I have the nails? Do I have got the equipment? Am I going to have to go put $30,000 of new saws and screwdrivers on – on credit card or do I actually have, I want you to do all of that math and then say, now I'm ready to start a business. I got four jobs lined up. I can make five calls. I want you to have 10 jobs in the hopper. I want five. I got five more down downstream. You see what I'm doing there? I'm being really certain as George said, the boat I'm about to jump into is solid. It doesn't sound like it's there yet. It sounds like it's close, but it doesn't sound like it's there yet. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's, it, that's the confidence I needed, John, right there. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I want you to go, no, bullcrap, dude. I've got it. I'm ready. I want to hear some fight in your voice, Elvin. I want to hear that you want to be a small business owner, and this is what you were born to do. But right now, it sounds like you're kind of like, eh, I don't know. Here's the deal. Hang <laughs> on the line. Probably because I'm a little bit intimidated, so. Oh, don't be uh, intimidated by me, dude. I'm not very tough at all. But listen, <laughs> hang on the line here, and I'm going to send you a copy of Dave Ramsey's Small Business Playbook, The Entree Leadership. And it will walk you through step by step. And before you quit all things, I want you to walk through this book and say, okay, I am officially ready to do this. And man, we need more good carpenters out there who are ethical and show up on time and tell the truth. Go get them. scripture of today of the day comes from Psalm 143:10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. 
May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, self-trust is the first secret of success. Imagine the energy of a jam-packed arena with people ready to experience what it means to live life to the fullest. Picture all your favorite speakers together on one stage, empowering you with tools and principles that will create unstoppable momentum in your life. That is Smart Conference. Smart Conference is back, and it's been three years, and we are so pumped to get this event back on the road. We're going to be in Dallas, Texas on Saturday, October 22nd. This is not just a rally, pep rally, like, woo, shaking pom-poms. This is thousands of people just like you coming together under one roof to help you create unstoppable momentum in your life. You'll learn how to build wealth, achieve your goals, strengthen your relationships, and so much more. But you won't just learn. You'll also have a great time. Trust me. We know how to party and have a good time. All of us here at Ramsey will be there, and our special guests, Craig and Amy Groeschel from Life Church, are coming too. Tickets start at $39. That's a great price for an all day event like this. You won't find a price like that anywhere. Get your tickets now before they sell out there. We've sold thousands and thousands already. Visit RamseySolutions.com slash events to learn more. Let's go to Tara in Corpus Christi. What's up, Tara? Hi, Tara. Hi, this is Tara. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is John. Good to talk to you, Tara. How's hey. it going? <laughs> good, good. What's up? I have a question um, that I need help with, a little bit of guidance, um, wisdom. My husband and I have recently come into some money from a sale of uh, his business, and uh, he is in a non-compete for a year and a half for what he did. Um, at the previous job, and I um, am working part time, so a little bit of income coming in. But um, our our basically our net worth right now is approximately four million. We've got um, a condo that's worth a million dollars that we're going to be renting out in another month that um, potentially would make about a thou- a couple of thousand a month. And we have a home that's paid off that's worth um, one million, and we have um, about two million, um, one point five cash, and the rest is like a, a mutual fund. Cash. We what do you are, have one point five million in cash. Is this from the sale of the business? Yes, we have. Correct. We haven't okay. invested that part yet. Okay. Wow. Okay. Way to go. Thank you. How old and are you two? So, fifty-one. Wow. Awesome. Okay, 51. Yes, and we are, um, I guess, toying with the idea of taking him. He has to take a year and a half off from his work because of non-compete. And um, we are thinking about possibly just not working, both of us not working for a year and a half, traveling a little bit, possibly investing in another home in Colorado to fix up and sell or maybe to even put in a rental market. and we just don't know if I should stop working. I have a potential to make about $100,000 a year if I went back full time um, and or any time, really. I mean, I can go back in a year and a half as well and make the same amount. But is it a wise decision or is it a risky, too risky of a decision to take that year and a half off to go enjoy ourselves and do something we want to do uh, and then get back into the workforce in about a year and a half? So I'll, that- I'll, I'll let George answer the math part of this um here's a couple of big red flags i've got number one you've backed yourself into a corner of either working or enjoying ourselves and i do not think those things are mutually exclusive especially at the level you two are operating at the second thing is is i would want to be really intentional about what you think you're going to get out of a year and a half of not working here's why most people have fallen under the illusion that the goal of life is to get to a place where I can do nothing. And that's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. I spent some time with Jay Leno this week. He's 72, I think, does 200 dates a year. That's a lot of flying around the country. But when I asked him, he's like, why would I? St- I love this. And so the idea of not doing this sounds more punitive than actually like, I made it. I don't have enough money, right? Same with Dave. Dave has no reason to be in work financially. But he, it, mm-hmm. it brings him joy, and it's what uh, helping and serving and loving people is what, what fills his, his cup. So 
What I would challenge you on is what do you think you and your husband are going to gain by just pausing life for a year? The third thing is, is absolutely, I would not buy a house 14 hours from your home to renovate and then rent out. Being a long distance landlord is a disaster. It's tough. And if you buy a nice house, you fix it up and you end up with a management company that's going to be for you are your margin of return is going to be much lower. I'd much rather see you get some houses there in Corpus and fix those up or mm-hmm. buy a beach house or whatever you want to do with your money. Um, but it sounds mm-hmm. like y'all just want something different and you've mm-hmm. got money now. Is that fair? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I, that's a whole different conversation because that's two people that say, hey, we've worked this hard like like we've worked like maniacs and we're 50 we're mm-hmm. about halfway home mm-hmm. on this whole adventure what do we want to mm-hmm. do and that's a totally different conversation than well let's try this let's just take a year off let's do that you see what i'm saying because mm-hmm. you're going to wake up in a year and here's going to be the best part of it you had a year off it's gonna be cool the worst part of it is that you're going to go with you and this person who wants a different life who wants to feel different become different wants to have a different different level of intimacy in their marriage, wants fill in the blank, wants to live in a different part of the country, that person's still going to be there. You're just going to be a year older. You're going to be a year's worth of not working with less money, right? And then you're going to have made some some decisions. I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to do this. That's going to feel like, ah, I'm doing a thing. You're not doing a thing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's it going to cost to travel for a year and a half and do what you guys want to do? A lot. (laughs) Like give me 100,000? Okay. Two hundred thousand. Um, well, okay. Well, our expenses. We, our son is still in college, so we, we're still cash flowing that. So that's about four thousand a month. And in addition to that, it would be maybe another. I would. I would say it would be at a minimum of five thousand a month. So it looks like over ten thousand for expenses every month at least. Okay. So yes. What's your husband? What was his? What was? Give me a. I know you can't be specific. What? Give me a general. What did he do? Health healthcare sales. Okay. So is he gonna continue being a salesman once he once his not competes over? Um, he's he's thinking about doing something a little bit different, but in healthcare, yeah. Do you want to continue to live the life of a salesman's wife? No. <laughs> That's what I thought. Y'all need to have that conversation. <laughs> So the truth is, financially, on paper, yeah, you can do this. It's not going to break the bank. You can still retire with dignity. But to John's point, I would ask myself, what am I going to get out of this? Why am I doing this? What kind of life do we want long term so we don't come back from this trip and go, what now? We feel empty again. So you still got a lot of life ahead of you. The life of a salesman. Can be v- well. It wasn't. He was not in sales. Okay. He um, the product that he developed, they sold. Uh, he okay. Not- okay. No. <laughs> so this, it, uh, if we had 20 or 30 more minutes, this feels like a relationship conversation that okay. you have not sat down and said, here's what I, I've got, I've got 50 years left. The math works in my mm-hmm. favor. And here's what I have pictured of uh, that looking like. And it's not this. Can you go travel for a month and then come back and go, all right, how do we feel? Yeah, we thought about that as well because I do have a, a job potentially lined up and I could start in another month or so. So that would be I like this a good idea. compromise. You'll then get you the travel bug play, out of yeah. you. And this could be a yeah. great opportunity for your husband to retool and get some education and some new skills that he's going to need to learn in the next chapter of his life. But all of this starts with you guys going to breakfast together and spending half a day doing a post-mortem. Here's the first 50 years. We've been married for this long. Here's where we are. What do we want the next half of this thing to look like? And you are going to have to be honest, Tara, about your needs moving forward. Hey, thanks to Kelly and Will and AJ and Zach and the gang back there in the booth. George, great show. Awesome times. Thank you, John. America, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Be kind to one another. Get outside and go play. We'll see you soon on The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com show.